first efficiency I like to talk about is aerodynamic efficiency. Right? So uh, a tri bike is purposely built around the aero bar. Being in an aero position, uh, just by nature of its name, means that you're more aerodynamic. Right? So that's the goal of it. Right? So that'll help us get from point A to point B as fast as possible, or maybe with as less energy as possible to help really set us up for a good run. Right? So um, when it comes to being in an aero position, there's some sustainability that is very important, right? So if for whatever reason we're getting you into an aero position, but you're having to sit up all the time, well, it's really not doing us any justice to uh, to keep that kind of aero position. We really want sustainability of that aero position, right? And that will keep the aerodynamic benefit for a longer period of time, right? So uh, in this case, uh, there's a couple areas that we would pay attention to uh, in terms of um, with athletes fit, and so we would look, look at um, one, maybe how how uh, narrow she is. So that changes our aerodynamic efficiency. So how narrow maybe we can get our stance uh, at her elbow width. Um, sometimes the narrower uh, is often a little bit faster. For every individual athlete, there'll be variations on whether or not their shoulders can sustain that. Um, some of it has to do with how how forward you are, and how much weight is falling on the front end, to whether or not you can also sustain some of these arrow positions for a longer uh, uh, time period. So that brings us to the next area is, okay, we're creating an arrow position, we have arrow bars, we're putting the athlete in those arrow bars, hoping they can sustain that position, truly trying to set up a position that allows them to sustain that position. Uh, so then it comes down to, how do we create the efficiency of the upper body now that, um, now that they're in this low position. So on a tri bike, compared to a road bike, I would say that you gain upper body efficiency. So in a road bike, you're typically in your hoods or maybe you're in your drops to get a little bit lower to become more aerodynamic. Or maybe you're even trying to like hold on the tops and get really tucked in. That requires so much energy to really sustain that aerodynamic position on a road bike. So uh, the benefit of a tri bike is that, again, we have the aero bar, and now we're actually resting our skeletal system into uh, the aero bar cuffs and pads, right? So um, in this case, we're actually using your skeletal system to hold the body weight that we've tilted forward and put out over the front end. And we're using that skeletal system instead of a lot of, of our muscle to actually maintain that posture in that position. So that's actually a huge benefit from an upper body standpoint, and that one, we can just unload, we're not using that energy while we're biking. We also just came out of the swim, so we've, we've really taxed that upper body. We've taxed, some, taxed the shoulders, we've taxed uh, a lot of the muscles um, uh, during that swim. So we want to help uh, preserve some of that muscle and get us ready for the run. So an aero bar and allowing us to rest into that front end into our skeletal system is actually a great way to increase upper body efficiency. So the last area of efficiency that we pay attention to would be our hip efficiency. So a way of evaluating um, hip efficiency or, or maybe a way of talking about it really has to do with at the top of the pedal stroke. Right? So uh, when we close the hip down, meaning that at the top of the pedal stroke, that's the most, most closed your hip will ever be. And we never want it to be overly closed because if you're gonna one, maybe create impingement in the hip joint, uh, but it's also just less efficient to get over the top of the pedal stroke. So an advantage of a tri bike is that we improve efficiency of that hip area, especially knowing that we've got a low back which is closing our hip down uh, by being more forward in space. Right? So a quick way of evaluating this in the two-dimensional world is looking at uh, where maybe the knee is relative to the toe box. So I would say most people, we might see if we're looking at the two-dimensional world, the front end of that knee right around the, the toe box. That's kind of the bell curve of what I see most people capable of doing where we're not putting too much weight on, out on the front end where they can't sustain uh, that weight distribution change. So having that athlete a little more forward in space again opens the hip more so at the top of the pedal stroke so when the, the foot is right at that 12 o'clock position. Right? So that's a, an area of efficiency that we really pay attention to. So I would say in your case, uh, Assuming, let's say the saddle and everything was, was the right height, uh, we could evaluate and say, wow, you're at least in a position where that knee is at least at the toe box. As you get more and more performance oriented and really want to lower the back down more and close that hip down, 
well then we might actually let you be even more forward in space, right? And then it just comes down to the sustainability of that upper body, making sure that we support that upper body really well, and uh, usually you'll, you'll find more success in that efficiency. Uh, some other areas that when we talk about efficiency of the hip and we talk about that forwardness, not only are we uh, moving like forward in space and really opening up that hip, it's that we're also fighting gravity less, right? So if we think of on that road bike, when you're pedaling, right, you're, you're lifting the weight of the leg against gravity. And you do that mostly with your hip flexor, right? When you're in this uh, neutral position. As you bring the torso down lower and lower, all of a sudden you close that hip angle so much that the hip flexor doesn't function quite as well. As we move you forward in space, now instead of pedaling up in front of you, lifting the weight of the leg against gravity, now it's a little more behind you. So now the, the pedal stroke or the, the leg weight is kind of penduluming in space. So we're actually moving less uh, leg weight around the pedal stroke uh, as we move you forward in space, which um, again, not only opened up the hip uh, to make it more efficient, so now we're fighting less gravity by being more forward in space. So uh, a road bike has a limit to how forward we can get that seat. So the tri bike itself uh, allows, just based on the geometry, allows that seat to come more forward. Then we might look at equipment selection, like what saddle are you riding? So if you're riding a more traditional saddle where the sitting platform is way back in space, it's counterproductive to the direction we're trying to go. Right, so we want to make sure that you're forward enough in space, so a forward riding, more triathlon specific saddle will allow that forwardness to really gain access to that hip efficiency that we're after. Um, sometimes, especially as the riders get shorter, or leg lengths get uh, shorter, then we might even talk about crank length, right? So the only way to open up that hip, even if we're more forward in space, without raising your back up, is to actually uh, push your leg down. So let me let me move, move this forward to where the crank is at the top. Right, so in your case, you have long legs, and on a bike that has a relatively short crank, uh, for its size, so um, you're at somewhat of an advantage over a smaller rider who's, let's say, you know, five four, who is on a bike where it's not not very fit, um, a fit oriented uh, selection of crank choice. So, uh, but in your case, uh, you've got a lot of advantages here. So, um, at the top of the pedal stroke, again, that's the most close our hip ever gets, and we want it nice and open for efficiency. So. If we don't want to change our aerodynamic benefit by raising you up to gain more hip efficiency, well, we could just change the crank length, which changes the diameter of the pedal stroke that you go through, which means that at the top of the pedal stroke, you're going to help open up that hip as that foot is actually lowered down. Right? So that smaller diameter creates more efficiency gain at that hip area. So uh, a huge benefit when we're talking about the trap on the world um, and really trying to get from point A point B as fast as possible and as efficient as possible and really setting you up for a great